October 5th, 2024. I'm torn. I'm a bit confused. I'm going to try and sort this out in some shape or form, through these words somewhat amused. My head is running around in circles as I try to order my thoughts to coherence. Here it goes. Everybody has a place. But also, nobody has one either. Does that make sense? And also, I feel like most, if not all, people fall somewhere in between, dipping their toes and feeling each, sometimes fully submerged. Other times, just a stone skip along that spectrum. I would also apply that logic of a spectrum to most things, with the exception of mathematics, and along that trajectory, physics and science. I would also include, to that exception, puzzles and physical material goods, things that can be built or broken down and solved, things that have an endpoint, an ending completeness. That is the uniqueness of mathematics, that the problems can be solved. Without that language, it's hard to imagine how any of our physical goods, their blueprints, would have been able to be created. And of course, without math, we wouldn't have been able to begin to understand how the universe works, let alone our Earth, our Sun, our Moon, our solar system. Different forms of arts and entertainment are also part of that spectrum exception, the uniqueness of music, books, movies, media, games, most of which can be solved, can be completed. It is us, the voyeurs, the participants, the players, the consumers, that once the experience and ending of consumption comes to a close, whatever emotions and feelings that came and went, that waxed and waned throughout that journey, however brief or sustained for that moment of entertainment or activity was, it is the spectrum of our joys, our hates, our loves, our agony, our humanity, that eats and lingers on as we come back and relate it all again to ourselves to face the births of the next moments. Did we make it? Hindsight is 2020. You could see why so many people and religions seem so obsessed with the concept of life after death. It is that ending, that fear of the possibility of completeness, complete darkness, aloneness, the finality of life with nothing beyond, that eats at them, that tears people, cultures, nations apart, throwing out all logic. We fear what we do not know, so much to the point where compassion and empathy and understanding get trounced by that fear. That fear of our neighbors where differences are put to the test, as we each land differently on the spectrum of judgments, flowing between absolute approval and absolute condemnation. It's a duality, a dichotomy, with such satisfaction of completing something, something material, a problem, an equation, a test, a movie, a song, a house remodel, the roller coaster of emotions along that journey, of life coming to an end, and the suffering, pain, relief, and love left behind, from infancy to the elderly. I wish someone would have told me long ago that we'll always have our spectrum of judgments about things, life, ourselves, people, etc. And that it is a part of being human, to think, to ponder, to ask what is right, what is wrong, what is in between. I wish someone would have told me that, when you are judging someone, you have to also try and be aware of including a person's past, history, family, trauma, and so on. Of course you may only know some, or maybe no details at all, and may just go by instinct and gut, depending on the different types of relationship. But most importantly, I wish someone would have told me that when I do have my judgments, it is crucial for me to remember and consider that everyone, individually, each has different levels and capacities to understand and especially process. Not just from obvious language or culture barriers, but also throughout the spectrums in brain and body structure, health, disability, intelligence, IQ, age, the ability to listen, to grasp things, concepts, to think critically and comprehend, and that not one of these things are better than the other and not quantifiable, even as we painstakingly continue to label and quantify these intangibles. I wish someone would have especially grilled in me at a young age that judgments in itself are not wrong or bad or negative, that it's what we do with them that shapes our inner selves and reverberates through the layers to our outer selves, to our actions, our inactions, our hesitance, to survive, to thrive. I wish again, that someone would have told me that no one can ever really be in someone else's shoes, someone else's life, to experience exactly the same things, have the same history, ancestry, and so on. And that that is okay. It's okay that we are all different and unique, and yet are all one and the same. We group up and have stereotypes and similarities as a species, race, culture, nations, states, religions, beliefs. The sad thing is, it's the trauma, the suffering, that binds us, that connects us, that we relate to each other deeply, individually and collectively. 
That then amplifies the love and connection we feel as the different levels of relief are birthed from the aftermath of the very suffering and pain we just cyclically caused. It is infinity, the figure eight. It's the legacy of life as we know it, from the grandest to the minuscule. We all have a place. We all have no place. We all have something and also have nothing. Everyone will do what they can. Everyone will be who they are. Everyone will go where they are led, near to afar, wherever their observations, then their judgments, our judgments, take us.